In this Spotlight session, I will show you the new features in Summaries. I will start by talking about when to use Summaries and I will put them into context with other uh, writing features in MaxQDA. Then I will show you the new features and I will also show you some of the old features that are still available. So when are you using Summary Tables? In short, uh, summary tables work really well for survey, surveys and short answer data. Um, and that is because um, summary grids are dependent on text that is already coded. So you need to have already coded text in order to create summaries of coded segments. Um, summary tables are especially useful for segments that don't have too much text. So if you have, for example, a coded segment that is three or four pages long, uh, that will be not as effective because the summary table is really designed for bringing different smaller pieces together and then to write one summary based on it. If you have larger segments of text that are coded, it's oftentimes much better to use um, code memos. Um, in that vein, summary tables are less useful when you have many or very, very many codings of the same code assigned to one case. So if I have, for example, one interview uh, in which I have coded 75 different segments with one code. In that case, again, it would be probably better to use memos or other writing functions because the window of um, retrieved segments in your summary grid will be just, just be too long and you'd have to do a lot of scrolling or you'd have to have a gigantic um, screen. So uh, I mentioned this already, but where are summaries in connection with other writing tools in MaxQDA? So in general, you have kind of two ends of the spectrum. On one end, you have the memo. The memo are a really large writing canvas and memos can be linked to multiple codes and multiple segments. And if you want to learn more about this, check out one of the videos on the new features of code memos. Um, but codes can also be hardwired to documents and codes, so you can have them directly connected to a case or you can have them directly coded, uh, connected to a code. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the codes themselves. You may not think that codes are writing features, but um, actually you need to give every code a name. And a name can be just a word, but it can also be several words. So it's also a form of writing, but a very, very limited form of writing, right? Um, and your codes are hardwired to the data because you've got to attach data to your codes or codes to your data, depending on how you want to see it. So in between these kind of like big functions of the large writing canvas and the very small writing canvas, you have a, a series of different writing functions that are kind of in the middle. And the summary grid is one of them. Uh, so the summary grid is a medium-sized writing canvas. You can write... Um, you can write in them, but you don't, for example, have the um, word processing features that you would have in memos. So you're a little bit limited with your layout, which means you're a little bit limited in how you can organize and display large amounts of writing. Um, and, so, and the summary grids are also hardwired to the sum of codings per case. So again, for memos, you don't need to have codes, but for summaries, you need to have codes and codings already attached to your data. And that's also the difference between the summary grid and the paraphrase. Uh, um, the paraphrases are also medium-sized writing canvases, but you don't have to have any codes in order to write paraphrases. So the use of summaries is really dependent on the data and also maybe where you are in the stage of developing your codes or refining your codes or summarizing your codes. Um, the last one that I just want to talk briefly about is the code commons. Those are also, like the summary grid, dependent on having already coded data, but the difference between the commons and the summaries is that the summaries are displaying the sum of codings per case. So if I have an interview with Max and I coded everything that Max said about health, in the summary grid I would see one uh, little cell that has all the coded segments from Max talking about health, and I could summarize all of those. Versus in the code comment, I could write a small summary um, for each time Max talks about health. So it's a really a different granularity. So where do you find these uh, summary grids in MaxQDA? Here you see in the top toolbar uh, the summary grid in the analysis tab. 
the summary grid, the summary tables, which are um, features that you already may know from MaxQDA 2018. And the new uh, feature here is the summary explorer. And I will talk about that in a second. So here is your summary grid, which has not changed in layout from 2018 to 2020. Um, you can see on the left here, uh, a list of codes. And on the top here in the columns, you see your different cases. And the blue button indicates that something in this interview has been coded with that code. So for example, here I know um, Max has said something about career, has something about, said something about health, home life, recreation, and so forth. And the green uh, uh, buttons here indicate that there is actually already a summary written or started for that specific combination of Max talking about career or Max talking about home life. This is actually great to see um, where um, other team members have already started working or it's also good to um, re-familiarize yourself with your old work. Maybe you haven't worked on the data for a week and you click on this and you see, ah, here are the summaries I already wrote and here are the summaries that I already need to write. In this next, next window, in the coded segments here, you can see all the coded segments, for example, here for Max talking about recreation. And if there were more coded segments, you would see this list here expand. And that's why I said earlier is like, it's not very helpful to use a summary grids when you have, let's say, 150 coded segments. Um, and you want to write a summary uh, about these 150 coded segments. In that case, you may want to use memos and you may want to use the retrieved segments window in one of the four basic windows in MaxQDA. But if you have kind of like a medium amount or a smaller amount of coded segments, like maybe all answers to question one or something like that, then this is a really great tool to directly go from your data to write a summary. Yeah? So the summary is basically attached to the sum of all codings in here. All right, so a new feature in MaxGA 2020 is the Summary Explorer. So once you've written summaries, you can explore your summaries and you can engage directly with your summaries rather than engaging with the data. Um, you can select different interviews or like I did here, you can select different document groups that you can then compare. So you can compare the summaries you wrote for New York and you, with the summaries you wrote for Indiana. And you can also select different codes that you can just drag and drop in this window um, based on what topic you're interested in. So here we see the Summary Explorer. And you can see here we have my interviews from New York um, and we have the interviews from Indiana. And here you don't see the data, but what you see is actually the summaries that were written. So this is a great way to, in a fairly accelerated way, to engage in thinking across different cases and engaging with your analytic work rather than analytic, um, uh, engaging only with your, with your raw data. But that doesn't mean that you're disconnected from your data because you can see here these little links. If you click off on one of those links, the main uh, screen in Max QDA will actually jump directly in the document browser um, to that piece of data. So you're always still connected, but you have this little canvas here where you can in a very concentrated way engage with the summaries that you wrote or for example with the summaries that your team members wrote. The last feature I want to show you is not a new feature, but it complements the new features very well. Um, so here is the summary table. And the summary table allows you to um, contrast different cases here. For example, like I have the I have Max, Joanna, George, and I can actually display um, the, um, the summaries that I've made case by case. And I can also import into my summary grid some variables that I have already in MaxQDA. So this allows me to um, create these very concise summaries that are really helpful if you want to print them out. And if you want to use them as a next step, for example, in a group analysis, where maybe you don't do this directly in MaxQDA, but you print it and you engage in a team activity where you maybe sort or create new codes or create even new summaries that you can then bring back into MaxQDA. Thank you.